Welcome to my cultural diffusion escape room. So this works on the same premise as a real escape room in real life, where you have to find different clues to be able to unlock the doors. So the clues, they're really just hyperlinked to Google Forms. So maybe we click on this globe here and it opens up to a Google Form with whatever you want. Maybe a map, maybe a primary source, maybe, you know, if this is math or something, a math question. And for me, you have to read the primary source answer the question. Sometimes I put multiple questions just to make it a little bit more challenging. You could actually make it so we have to type in the answer. There you go. And I give a clue. So the clue here, I3. And there's different ways to set up the clues. It's kind of just limited by your imagination. Really, you can do whatever you want with clues. And once you get those clues, you could set up a main door lock. The main door lock, again, is just a Google form. So you type in the clues and you unlock the door. Now that could be it if you want, or you can go to another escape room and another escape room. I did four in one lesson. So it was cultural diffusion was the, was the lesson. First, they went through a trade room, cultural diffusion through trade. Then they went through war room, migration and technology. The lock unlocked the door and brought you to the next room, which was the war room. Same premise, you know, you can click on any one of these items and a question comes up. Then you use the clues that you get from the questions to open up the main lock. The next room was migration. So you can click on, you know, the guitar. I made the guitar one of the links. The guitar went to Google Form with the video. The video loads, they watch the video, they answer the question, they get the clue. And then collect the clues, open the main door lock. And the final room for me was the technology room. So, you know, the, the computer's clickable, the printer's clickable, the Apple up here is clickable, and it gives you different primary source-based questions. And there's the final lock. And they made it out. All right, you did it. I knew you would. Okay. Congratulations. So guys. I had a little you video of the plays when, when they break out of the rooms just to kind of congratulate them. And then they can click on this little link here and fill out the Google form so they can submit their time. So I know exactly when they broke out. And if you want to have like a winner for the contest, you can. Or if you just want to know that they made it through, then that Google form on the final page can kind of be their proof. So how do you do all this? So it really just starts off as a Google slide. And once you're done making the slide, you can throw in links on anything you want. So, you know, you, you could insert image, globe, look for, you know, a globe that you like, or you can use off, you can, you can grab something off the internet. But uh, usually I try to look for something transparent, which you could find by putting globe, transparent or even use one of those background removers that are on the web if you use google background remover and there you go so you have some kind of transparent um, image click on the image go to this little insert link looks like a little paper clip because you're attaching a link and then you you put the Google Form link or whatever link it is that you want to uh, to enter in there. For me, it was always Google Forms. So I would go to, I would create a new Google Form. And here's a finished one. I'd add the questions that I wanted. To make the question uh, required, you would click 
when you add a question, you'd click the little required button. And then you can select over here, response validation. And response validation will open up this little box here where you can say what you want them to type in to be able to unlock that answer. So for me, I would always put like text and then contains and the answer. And then you can put custom error text, which is like what the student will see if they get it wrong. Okay, you know, sorry, please try again or something like that. We can give a really good actual piece of feedback too, which would be even better. Okay, and then the very next section, so you'd add a section, that button right there. I already did that. The very next section could be where you add your clue. So you want to make a link to this now. And to do that, you go to send. Then the little link attachment button. So link. I usually shorten the, the URL. And then copy. And we can go back in. Click on the, the image that we inserted and insert the link. And there you go, it becomes a clickable link. Now, when you actually want to make this, this room playable for the students, you're going to go to File, Publish to Web, uh, Link. You'll go ahead and click. There's a Publish button that's down here at the bottom. I already published the website, so I already published this Google slide, so it's blacked out, but or it's grayed out. But if you click Published, it makes it like a website. So it publishes it to the web, and then you can click Link. Click the link. Press Control and C, or right-click Copy. And that makes it like a live web page. So students won't be able to click out of it. They will they won't be able to mess with it, but they will be able to click on all the links that you inserted. So to make the door and the lock, you can see I just kind of put a lock on the door. That's literally an image I got from the internet, and I just put it right on top of the door there. If your door is part of the background, you can go to uh, insert like a shape. And there you go. I insert the shape. I make it transparent so you could still see the background, the door. And then you could actually turn that, that transparent shape into a link. If you click the same exact button as before, insert link, throw in your, your link. There you go. So now um, even parts of the background can be turned into clickable links. Um, the actual background itself I uh, found on the internet just by going to a search of uh, background, wall, and floor I typed in. And this was one of the options. And I uh, right-clicked, change background, and actually chose the image from my hard drive. And that way the background doesn't shift around. It stays in one place when you actually turn it into an official background for the Google slide. And then you can add whatever you want. You know, this little bitmoji here to kind of personalize it. And that's it.